Hello again, this is your teacher, Rodolfo Eric Angat. Today we'll be learning about weathering. Remember in our previous discussion, we considered weathering, erosion, and deposition as factors responsible for the slow changes on Earth's crust. The process of weathering takes hundreds or even thousands of years, except when the one responsible for weathering are the human beings. Human activities can make the process of weathering so fast because human beings have invented explosives. The use of dynamites can cause big rocks to break very fast or very easy. They can also use machineries to physically break the rocks. Weathering can happen fast because of human activities. However, in the natural sense, weathering happens very slowly and it takes hundreds and even thousands of years to break a big boulder of rock into a sediment. Erosion is when the materials are carried from one place to another and that is how it differs from weathering. When the materials stop moving and they settle down, we call that deposition. Today, we'll focus on weathering. There are two types of weathering, physical or mechanical weathering and chemical weathering. We have four examples of physical or mechanical weathering here. We have frost wedging, root wedging, abrasion, and exfoliation. While for chemical weathering, we have six examples. The first one is hydrolysis or the interaction of the materials in rocks with water, oxidation or the interaction with oxygen, carbonation, lichens, acid precipitation, and differential weathering. Now let's go back to physical weathering and scroll down to the bottom. So this is what we call as frost wedging or freezing and thawing. One of the unique property of water is that when water turns to ice, again when water turns to ice, it expands and this causes the rock to break apart. Say, for example, in this illustration here, this is a crack in the rock, and when it rains, the water fills up the crack, only occupying this much volume. However, when that water becomes ice, the volume of the water expands by approximately 9%, causing the crack to become bigger. Now, when this ice melts into water, what happens is there's more space for more water to come in. So one, more water spill, fill up the bigger crack now. And when that water freezes again into ice, the volume again expands by 9%, thus making the crack bigger again until the rock totally breaks apart. One very good property of water, or I would say unique property of water is that when water is cooled, it contracts like one would expect until temperature of approximately 4 degrees Celsius is reached. So most of the materials that we have, they contract when they are cooled. And water is also like that. However, when 4 degrees Celsius is it's reached, instead of contracting, the water expands as it freezes until it reaches a volume of 9% bigger than before. And that is ultimately what we call as frost wedging. And here, in this illustration here, this shows us frost wedging or freezing and thawing. Water collects in the rock, the water freezes, making, making the crack bigger, and, th and then 
the water again is added and the water freezes again. And remember, the volume of water increases by 9% when it freezes into ice. And when that continuously happens, freezing and towing, freezing and towing, the rock breaks. And we call that weathering. Remember, weathering is the breaking of rocks. Of course, there are different types of there are different types of weathering or there are different examples of weathering and frost wedging is the one that you should remember most. Of course, when you get a hammer and you hammer a rock and it breaks, that's also physical weathering. Remember in physical weathering, the rock only change, changes in size and not in its property. It just breaks apart. Now, the second type of weathering is chemical weathering we have those chemical weathering here reaction with water is hydrolysis reaction with oxygen is oxidation reaction with acid like acid rain and reaction with organisms these are all examples of chemical weathering as we scroll down this is one example of a reaction and you usually find this inside caves the stalagmites and the stalactites. Okay, stalagmites, stalactites. Here, chemical weathering from oxidation or from oxygen, which is called oxidation. And then chemical weathering from acid, usually in highly urbanized area or in highly urbanized areas, there's a lot of acid rain because of the result of burning fossil fuels. And here, this is the chemical weathering because of living organisms like these barnacles here. The barnacles attach themselves to the pillars and they release acidic substances that slowly degrade the rocks. Of course, these rocks here are man-made because they're pillars, but they're still rocks. Lichens can also really, uh, grow on rocks and release acids that can break the rocks in time. So if we will be typing lichens, breaking rocks, then this would be an example of chemical weathering. Let's see. Okay, so these are the lichens. So I'm sure you've seen them. So these lichens are slowly breaking the rock. And because of that, they are an agent of chemical weathering. Okay, so again, there are two types of weathering, chemical weathering, and the second one is physical weathering, which is also known as mechanical weathering. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.